tonight. Yeah, all these neutral court games, three neutral courts and all the rest in Murfreesboro. So a chance for a big test here in Moraga. Middle Tennessee in the blue, St. Mary's in the whites. Mitchell Saxon, Jared Coleman-Jones to tip. And it's controlled by St. Mary's. Those starting lineups first for the Gales at 6-5. and five. Augustus Marshallonis, Aiden Mahaney, Alex Dukas form the backcourt. Joshua Jefferson and Mitchell Saxon down low for Middle Tennessee. Justin Porter is the point guard for the Blue Raiders out of Conference USA. With Jacob Johnson in the backcourt, Elias King, the leading scorer for the Blue Raiders as they double-team Mahaney with eight to shoot. Dukas is open. He'll let a three fly, and that rims out. Joshua Jefferson, the offensive board, and the putback. We saw that offensive rebound, a major factor against Vegas. 33-0 boards in the win over the Rebels. And for Middle Tennessee at 5-6, and six, Justin Porter with uh, Jacob Johnson and Elias King in the backcourt for Nick McDevitt in his sixth season. Justin Buford and Jared Coleman-Jones, a 6'11", Transfer from Northwestern form the front court for Middle Tennessee. Want to get you to four out, sometimes five out, create those driving gaps. Mahaney diving on the floor for the loose ball. Five to shoot for the Blue Raiders. Driving the lane is Jacob Johnson. Air balls the lefty, and here comes Dukas. Two teams, Dave, that have struggled offensively so far this season. And Joe Rahan said, We will push to try to get some easy shots in transition. Mitchell Saxon, the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Week. Also one of five National Players of the Week after a huge performance against UNLV. Dukas will try it again. This time he knocks it down. Both baskets off offensive rebounds, and McDevitt needs to talk it over. Got to keep them off the glass. So a timeout taken by Middle Tennessee and Nick McDevitt, who or rather, over the last two years. A little while before they go home, their next home game on the 3rd of January is... Reinhardt, an NAIA school. Well, they will uh, go from here, the Blue Raiders will, to Southern Utah. Part of a scheduling initiative, Dave, between Conference USA and the WAC. Porter inside, knocked away. St. Mary's has begun the game two of four. 20 on the shot clock. Mahaney, it's been a struggle for him over the Gale's last two games. Jefferson puts the smaller Buford on his hip into the lane. He goes. Misfires with the right hand. Jefferson's been playing with a lot of confidence down low. He to take advantage of that mismatch down on box. Three on the way. Justin Porter rims it in. Only a 23%er from three-point range going into play tonight. The two teams who have not shot the three ball well at all, Dave. Both under 30%. St. Mary's at 27. Middle Tennessee at 28. How about the Gales going one of 19 on threes last time out? A lot of good looks. Long two on the way from Mahaney. Comes up short. Another offensive rebound. Dukas. Got it. Three baskets of three offensive boards. That's what St. Mary's, Dave, does better than just about anybody in the country. They average almost 16 offensive rebounds a game. That's ninth in Division I. 33 against UNLV as many rebounds offensively as the Rebels had for the entire game combined, offense and defense. St. Mary's leads 8-3. to three. King, tough shot. Good defense there by Jefferson. Dukas was 6 early. The Gales are 3 of 7. 5 rebounds to the Blue Raiders, 1. Close touch for Saxon. 23 points, 16 rebounds against... UNLV had that ball slip out of his hands. Another offensive rebound for the Gales. That's four already. Saxon try the right side this time. Nice move with the left hand. He single-handedly took them to the promised land against Vegas with ten of his points in that second overtime. All ten points for the Gales in that second overtime. Alex Dukas kind of picking up where he left off after the first overtime as well. Porter across the lane and stepping on the baseline is Coleman Jones. Jalen Jordan will check in. 6'3", redshirt senior out of Conyers Juice. Dealt with two ACLs on his right knee. He checks in, as does the freshman big man Chris Loof. There's one thing this Blue Raider team does have, Dave. They've got size underneath. And they are exceptionally long and big at the wings. But still trying to find their way without Cameron Weston, who went down with 
an ACL injury early on. Saxon on the freshman. A couple of great moves, that old Pete Newell line. The quality of the shot is equal to the quality of the footwork. Great footwork that time by Saxon. He got off to a slow start this year, Dave, but he is really starting to find his footing. Porter misfires on the three. Rebound out of bounds. Last touch by Middle Tennessee. That takes us to our first media stoppage of tonight's ball game. Gales have scored the last seven. They have begun the game. Five of formula has remained the same for the Gales. Offensive rebounds, and they're outscoring Middle Tennessee 10 nothing already in second chance points. After scoring 31 second chance points in the win over Vegas last time out. Blue Raiders will do this. They'll show some token pressure as Elias King will man up with Marshall Onis on his way up the floor. Alex Dukas with six early for the Gales, who have their starting five on the floor. Saxon spins baseline. The freshman, Loof, sends it away. Chris Loof, he's a guy that's been coming on for Nick McDevitt's team. Career high 12 points with five rebounds in the Blue Raiders' last game, a loss to Belmont in Murfreesboro. McDevitt said he will be a factor for them this year. He said it early on. Eight to shoot. Here's Marshall Onis with the left hand. Can't get the angle. Saxon's tip doesn't go, and Loof wrestles the rebound away from Saxon. Now Porter accelerates to the front court. Tough pass to handle there for Justin Buford. Middle Tennessee has begun the game one of four. Dukas knocks that pass out of bounds. Blue Raiders, they're part of a rebuilt Conference USA, Dave, and picked along with Liberty to win the league by the league's coaches in the preseason poll. Completely overhauled Conference USA. It's going to be a turnover on the Blue Raiders. It's Charlotte, FAU, North Texas, Rice, UTSA, and UAB all leaving for the American. The time Mosley checks in. They have welcomed in four new members the conference has Jacksonville State and Liberty from the uh, Atlantic Sun and New Mexico State and Sam Houston State from the WAC. So a nine team conference right now for the time being. Louisiana Tech, Western Kentucky, Liberty all nine and three in this early season. Dukas, he's got the smaller man on him. He elevates and scores. He's got a half dozen early. They were dead in the water in that first overtime against Vegas. Dukas was the only scorer out there willing to make something happen and put himself on the line. Pardon me, Dukas now has eight on three of four shooting. Mosley, we get a whistle and a foul on the freshman, Loof, setting the pin down. Not much argument from Loof, sliding with the left hip, taking out Mahaney. Fourth Blue Raider turnover, they average 13 a game. Gales lead by 11. Marshall Onis left open. Hits a three. He needs to keep himself on the court. The shot's getting better. The key defensively, move your feet without fouling. Yeah, he's fouled out of two straight games. He was really the best player on the floor against Colorado State, going for a career-high 18. And then also doing the job, Dave, as you mentioned, defensively against Isaiah Stevens, the All-American point guard for the Rams, and then Dedon Thomas of UNLV. Well, that Thomas is going to have a bright future. Starting to date myself, I saw his dad play in the 90s. Great player for Vegas. A high school teammate with Joshua Jefferson at Liberty High School in Vegas. Luke Barrett has checked in for the Gales, replacing Dukas, who's pacing St. Mary's with eight points thus far. Gales have scored 17 of the game's first 20 points. Here's King for three. Good contest by Jefferson. That's King's game. A lot of shell drill for the Gales in practice. They want to create so many opportunities with the drive. And for St. Mary's, being fundamental defensively. Barrett drives the closeout. Tough shot. Oh, my wow. goodness. Behind the backboard, Luke Barrett floats it up and in and draws the foul, and he will go to the line for a chance at three. You're listening to Joe Rahan just rave about this guy, what he brings to the table. A little different look from Dukas at the three, being able to slash to the rim. 
He said something interesting before today's game, Dave, is he compared Luke Barrett's impact on the team just from a leadership and energy standpoint to Kyle Bowen. That's high praise. Does so much extra work in the weight room. Become more of a vocal leader, and he was huge in that victory last time out. He sure was. Last three games, in fact, Barrett is averaging 21 and a half minutes per game. He played 30 against UNLV, albeit in a two overtime game. All St. Mary's through the first seven minutes of this game. Coleman Jones going to work. Tough shot over Saxon, and the big man swallows up the board. Mitchell did a great job of staying down and avoiding the contact. Mahaney open. Can't find the range. Rebound out of bounds. Last touch by the Blue Raiders. Rayhan's very happy with the kind of threes they're getting, feeling like they'll eventually drop. His problem was the contested twos. Twos over a hand, as uh, Joe Rayhan put it. I'm really making the point, listen, hey, we, we don't think that Aiden Mahaney and Alex Dukas are going to combine to go one of 14 on threes very often. Barrett finds Mahaney, and Aiden well short on that three, but Luke right there for the offensive rebound. Eight to shoot. Marshallonis, mid post, right side. Jefferson slides at home. Great awareness of the shot clock, and McDevitt once again needs to talk it over. Middle Tennessee in big trouble on the road. 12-21 to play here in the opening half. Middle 2 to 3. The Gales out front. They're shooting 50% from the floor. Out rebounding Middle Tennessee. 12 to 2. The second chance points. 12 nothing. St. Mary's been just about a perfect opening seven and a half minutes for Randy Bennett. Shot attempts 18 to 6. So complete dominance. One and done so far for Middle Tennessee. Blue Raiders are one of six from the field. Again, it's been a struggle for Middle Tennessee to uh start the season offensively as Aiden Mahaney draws a charge. You know, part of that, you mentioned it, Dave, that the injury to, to Cameron Weston, who was preseason All-Conference USA, tore his ACL on November 9th against Stephen F. Austin. And at 14 points, five assists in that game. He was, he was this team's point guard, and it's tough, you know, when that guy goes down, a guy who you relied upon for heavy usage, and now I believe a technical has been assessed to Nick McDevitt. Indeed it has, but the, the Blue Raiders, they're, they're still trying to figure it out, as you mentioned early on. Yeah, the loss of Weston Hughes, he was their leading assist guy two years in a row, and their leading scorer last year, so you take a guy like that in the lineup, you're still kind of searching. Well, Nick McDevitt did not like that call on the charge, and Aiden Mahaney will have two technical free throws here. Michael Reed, Marcus Pettigrew, and uh, Ryan Holmes, our officials this evening. Mahaney comes up short on a free throw. Little bit off today offensively early for Aiden, but the guy that plays with so much confidence, he never lets that build onto the next play. Got to keep going. Second free throw is good for Mahaney. It's an early 20-point lead for St. Mary's, an 18-0 run after the three was 17.45 to play in this first half by Justin Porter. Blue Raiders have turned it over five times. As you mentioned, they're just one of six from the field. Got to try something defensively to turn the tide. At the very least, make the Gales work some clock and getting it across half court. Trying to get it to Saxon. Being defended by Coleman Jones, the 6'11 junior. Here's Marshallonis down the lane, high off the window. Can't get it to go. Now on the run. Johnson, a Euro step, draws the foul and banks it home. Aiden took one right in the chops on that Euro step. Couldn't slide over in time to absorb the blow. That puts a stop to an 18-0 St. Mary's run, and Johnson will now try and complete the three-point play. Tough way to pick up a foul for Mahaney, getting blasted in the mouth <laughs> right. and giving credit for the foul. At two possessions after drawing a charge. Johnson rattles out the free throw. 23 to 5, the St. Mary's lead. Glad you're with us on this Tuesday night. First of four straight at home for St. Mary's. First of three straight on the road for Middle Tennessee. Marshallonis floater. Great movement by the Gales. Marshallonis off a stagger weak side and took the dribble handoff and kept going. Full momentum all the way and moved to the basket. 
25 to 5. Jordan Ross and Harry Wessels head to the scores table. Johnson going to try and take Mahaney again. And able to get the roll. So Johnson with four straight for the Blue Raiders. Despite the slow start, I like the body language of Middle Tennessee. We saw that in the home loss to Weber State, how the Wildcats kind of just hung in there despite falling behind big. These guys showing that maybe they could compete here and make a run. Marshallonis blocked from behind. Nice play by Porter. Now on the run, Johnson coast to coast. Knocked away that time by Mahaney. A good defense by Aiden chasing him down. Jordan Ross, Harry Wessels will check in. And what moments Ross had in the game against UNLV thrown into the fire into that overtime period. And he assisted on the game tying basket and the game winning basket in double overtime. The Gales were down three, Dave, with 48 seconds left in double overtime. King midrange, air ball. And Luke Barrett, the last to touch. Well, Middle Tennessee will keep it. Well, I think, you know, with Jordan Ross, he, 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 He's a guy that's going to keep getting better the more reps that he gets. He's certainly shown an ability to find the open man. He also had the assist at Colorado State on essentially the dagger three hit by Joshua Jefferson. A lot of talent, won a national championship at the high school level. Jefferson, runner comes up short. And I don't think that the technical foul was done to fire up his team, but since then, Middle Tennessee has played much better. They have responded. Hit two of their last four shots. Jared Coleman-Jones, he was scoreless against Belmont. Did not take a shot. Porter with a drive. And there's Coleman-Jones cleaning it up with a tip jam. Wells was having to come over to provide help side defense that freed up the offensive board for the tip dunk. It's one thing Middle Tennessee does have. Again, they've got size. Two available bigs at 6'11". And, of course, we mentioned the size and length on the wings. Mahaney still looking for his first points. Great job by Johnson fighting over that ball screen. Aiden will try a three. Jefferson taps the rebound out. Mahaney swallows it up. Here's Wessels. Boy, he's got the 6'5 Johnson on him. He's got to go to work here. Miss fires, gets his own miss. Putback doesn't go. Rebound out of bounds to the Gales. Here comes Dukas. A 9.32 to go. That was a problem for St. Mary's, Dave, against UNLV. Missed layups. Point range when you look at home and away. And based on the personnel, they should be much better than that. Dukas returns, as does Marshallonis. Mahaney and Barrett come off. They keep the ball with the Gales. 20 to shoot as Ross will inbound. First possession of zone for either side. Well, you figure if the Gales continue to shoot the three the way they've been shooting it, you may see more zone as Dukas commits the turnover. Bad pass. Jefferson with the deflection. The Gales take it back. Three on two. Marshallonis lost the handle on the dribble. Whoa, what a pass by Jefferson. The look away. Well, one hand pass to Wessels for the jam. Now this staff really believes that Joshua Jefferson can be a you know, point forward type. They believe that is his strength. Ross fouls Jacob Johnson. And the coaching staff really is hung in with Jefferson during some of these ups and downs because they look big picture. Hey, you've got to make some mistakes and grow where you're going to be a better player down the line. Well, you go back to that Boise State game, and he only played, I think, 14 minutes it was. And, boy, since then... He has really responded. Over his last two, he's averaging 12 points, 12 rebounds a game. Two free throws here for Johnson. Mason Forbes will get his first minutes. Checking in for Jefferson. Here comes Chris Loof for the Blue Raiders. 27 to 10, St. Mary's start. Johnson hits both free throws. 
So eight and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Hills got out to a 23-3 start. Dukas has the 6-11 loof on him. Now here's Wessels. Ozell Jackson is checked in. How about that move from the 7-1 big man? The full pirouette and dancing to the key to finish on the other side. Randy Bennett loves his upside. And you just think with, with more game reps, he can really become a force. Good defense by Ross, the deflection and the steal. You look at the first half of the last two games, just locked down defense for St. Mary's. Ross. Back to Wessels. They clear the side for him. Six straight for the Gales coming from Harry Wessels. And Harry's body language says, you can't check me down there. And he has really improved his footwork. The Gales strength coach is Mike Neal. Talking about how much how much quicker Wessels has become since last year. Ross knocks it out of bounds, takes us to a timeout here in Moraga. Gale's doing it all right now. 18 to 6 points in the paint favoring St. Mary's. It's been all Gales over the first things, Dave, that you have to do to win games. One turnover, out rebounding the uh, Blue Raiders by 10. They're just imposing their will on the inside. Second chance points, once again, a huge factor. 12 points for the Gales off those. Seven Blue Raider turnovers. Justin Buford drops it off. The big man, Jared Coleman Jones. Five to shoot. Johnson on Dukas. Three to shoot. Leans in. The ball wedging between the backboard and the rim. It'll be a jump ball. The possession arrow favors Middle Tennessee. Dukas with tremendous footwork, avoiding that foul. Very aggressive, bodying up, but didn't do too much to get that foul. Now, Dave, you, you look at St. Mary's last two games, you know, and I think it really shows the growth of this team since the loss to Boise State. I mean, th those are two games I'm not sure the Gales would have won a month ago. Yeah, Colorado State, a gutty effort, and UNLV, it certainly wasn't pretty. would have been devastating to lose, but hanging in there and making the plays down the stretch. Now channeling the gritty, not pretty teams of the last couple years. Ross trying to wall up. Johnson shoots over him. Wessels with the rebound. Once again, one and done for Middle Tennessee. His 20-point lead matches the Gales' biggest advantage. 13 on the shot clock. Ross skips it. Dukas. Marshallonis with four to shoot. Ross to beat the shot clock. Comes up a little short, and Wessels goes over the back. Just the third team foul on St. Mary. Been a pretty clean game from that perspective. Not a great offensive possession there. Going the final few seconds before getting anything going off the ball screen, and then kind of the desperation three. One of the few poor possessions of the first half. Gales with 13 of 29 from the field. To spread you out, doing a great job of moving their feet. Nice pass there by Jalen Jordan. Wild shot from Coleman Jones. Misses everything. Five and a half minutes to play in half number one. Much more solid effort defensively keeping their main guys on the court. Trying to get the ball to Dukas. 13 to shoot. With five, Marshallonis. Ross again at the end of the shot clock. Little up and under. Pinballs out. Buford almost threw it away. Middle Tennessee has missed six of their last seven. Coleman Jones trying to find his way around Wessels. Mentioned the quickness of Wessels. He's doing a much better job of moving his feet defensively. 
A little matchup zone again here now. Blue Raiders back in the man. You got to wonder, Dave, I mean, if the Gales are going to see more zone as the year goes along. If they're not Do able this? to knock in the three, as I pre prevent you from taking a ball to the chin, <laughs> if they're not able to make the three point shot, then they think they may see some zone in confidence. Yeah. Ross and Wessels come off. You know, it, they have one of the factors you know, to beat that zone, which is a one to five. Gales can move the ball, but again, you just have to hit the outside shot, right, to break that defense. St. Mary's tonight, three of nine from distance. Buford, good defense by Forbes, but Buford gets it to go down and draws the foul. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap offensively because Forbes did everything on the defensive end that you could do to check an offensive player. Sometimes the guy makes a better play offensively. Terrific shot by Buford. Yeah, no doubt. Falling away high and brought rain with that. Almost grazed the rafters here at University Credit Union Pavilion. Here's Justin Buford trying to complete a three-point play. Just moved into 10th all-time in Middle Tennessee and blocked shots. 60 for his career. He completes the three-point play, and the St. Mary's lead at 17. Another look at that zone. A little high-low. Saxon blocked by Buford. There's number 61. And Buford now will try a three. Rebound Mahaney. The Gales, they've slowed down a little bit here against this zone. They missed their last four. Try to get that opening right at the foul line with Forbes. They executed well. Now Dugas will try a long three. And the rebound last touch by the Blue Raiders. So the Gales will have it out of this timeout, Dave. Gales offense has gone a little bit cold but still controlling the controllables at our final media of the first half. Yeah, it's certainly tough to... Basketball out of the timeout. And here's where you want to see St. Mary's start to kind of separate a little bit more, really drop the hammer. That's another step that this team can, can take before league play. That's what they couldn't do against Weber State in that home loss. Back into a zone go the Blue Raiders. Mahaney's back in there along with Jefferson. Dukas open. Three is in and out. Saxon an offensive board. Boy, got Coleman Jones in the air trying to draw the foul. And I think he's surprised there was no whistle. It's one of the challenges when you're playing a zone is to defensive rebound. You don't have that assignment of who you're blocking out. Martel, how about that pass to Saxon? Sealed off his man. And Marshallonis put it right in his lap for an easy two. Coach Bennett seems to get two or three of those every game off that baseline out of bounds. Marshallonis now with three assists. And Saxon's got a half dozen. King is back in there, the leading scorer for the Blue Raiders. Coming off a career high, 27 against Belmont. Good defense by Saxon there. King has 11 threes over his last two games. 11 for 20. Two and a half minutes to play. Here's Mahaney. Nine to shoot. Jefferson puts King on his hip. Now wants to go. Can't get the roll. And Saxon, the last man to touch the rebound. We made a big deal about building up King in the open, and he has been completely taken out of this game. And Joshua Jefferson, that really after that matchup against Tyson Dagenhart of Boise State, he has been up to the task. Here comes Chris Howell for the first time, and you see Elias King ready to inbound the basketball. You look at the foreman, Keelan Boone of UNLV. And Aruna of Cleveland State was shut out of that contest until late. King off front rim. Rebound saved, and Jefferson picks it up. 
Fine job by Jefferson to be there on that closeout on the three. Mahaney passed up the three with a 6-11 Loof closing out. Good footwork by Loof to stay with him. Mahaney will try. Off front rim. Credit to the Middle Tennessee big for hanging in there with Aiden. So Mahaney now 0 of 4 from the field. That makes him 5 for his last 35. Another turnover on Middle Tennessee. That's number 8. Something about the Gales in the first halves of the last two games completely locking down the opponent. Back to a zone for the Blue Raiders. Gales are 3 of 12 from 3. Howell trying to get it to Jefferson. Getting some pretty good looks against this 2-3. Wanting to get the ball to the foul line. Attacking the zone inside out. Now Jefferson's got it at the free throw line. A little high low to Saxon. Took too much time. And Loof able to send it out of bounds. So 14 to shoot. He also have it on the baseline. Ozell Jackson returns for Middle Tennessee. He also missed nine of their last ten. Howell threw it out of bounds. That's the second St. Mary's turnover. Here comes Marshall Onus back into the game. Gales that time not overly creative on that baseline out of bounds, just trying to throw it into the postman, and Saxon was knocked off his moorings. So instead of really kind of dropping the hammer, Dave, going into halftime, the Gales offense has sputtered. But they have still done the job on this end of the floor. Middle Tennessee has missed seven of its last eight. The Blue Raiders are just five for 20 for the game. St. Mary's rebounding advantage now growing to 14, 26 to 12. Porter, he's quick. Dangerous pass. Ends up in the hands of King. Jackson muscling in on Saxon. Very active hands for St. Mary's, but credit to the Blue Raiders for hanging in there. Back to a 2-3. Jefferson. 20 to shoot about a Nine second differential between the two clocks. This middle Tennessee zone has stifled the Gales. Duke has passed up the three. Instead, drops it off to Jefferson. That one's swatted away. Marshallonis picks it up. Mahaney at the end of the clock. Miss fires. And the rebound is picked up by the Blue Raiders with six with five. Here's Johnson, the open floor, knocked away by Marshallonis. No four seconds left in middle Tennessee. Will inbound from the baseline. Shot clock is off. Jalen Jordan will check back in. St. Mary's lead is 17. Here comes Buford as well. Jacob Johnson off for the Blue Raiders. So a chance for Nick McDevitt's club to at least take some momentum into the locker room. Three seconds with two. Tough three on the way is off the back rim for Jalen Jordan. And that takes us into the break. So, Dave, Gales sputter offensively heading into halftime. St. Mary's 14 of 40. They've missed 11 of their last 12, not scored in three minutes. This is the second all-time meeting, by the way, between these two teams. The last meeting, the only meeting, took place in the NCAA tournament. The first four in Dayton back in 2013, a 67-54 St. Mary's win. So the Gales will start with the basketball, looking to get their offense going again. The Blue Raiders open in a man defense. Bad pass by Jefferson. Picked off by Porter. Just the third St. Mary's turnover, and Porter uses speed to get to the rim and tipped in by Buford, but that'll be disallowed as the ball is in the cylinder. The Pretty Gales. easy call to make. But what? the turnover, though, A.G., off the first possession, Coach Bennett was shaking his head along the far sideline. Still kind of searching for a full 40 minutes, this team. And you could say the best 40 minutes they've played since the opening couple of games was that Davidson win during the uh, week of Thanksgiving. 
What can they do to get Mahaney loose? Here he is with a drive and a finish. First field goal for Mahaney. Creates some space in the key and let him go to work with his left hand. Now one for seven from the floor. Well, that's kind of been the missing ingredient, obviously, the last couple of games. And fortunately for St. Mary's, both wins. I think he was three for 20 last time out. Five for 31 over his last two games. Tough shot. Johnson with the offhand. Dukas with the rebound. So a 19-point St. Mary's lead a minute into the second half. Gale's rebounding advantage, 28-13. to 13. Saxon's got six points, a couple of rebounds. Here's Dukas, dangerous pass. Ten to shoot. Saxon lost the grip on the basketball, it looked like, and couldn't get the angle off the window. Buford a jump stop. Good hands by Mahaney. Creates the steal. Now the Gales will push. The Raiders staying in a man defense. A little high-low action. Jefferson downstairs, hacked by Porter. Good pass over the top from Saxon. And that's what you can do with St. Mary Saxon, a pretty good guy to run your offense through. He's a decent passer, more than decent, down low to find the open man. First foul on the Blue Raiders in the second half. Gales have led by as many as 20 in this game. On a couple of different occasions, 23 to 3 and 31 11. Jefferson, he is fouled. Good feed by Marshallonis as Jefferson made his way toward the cup. It's a play the Gales are so good at. They run a wheel with the guards on the weak side, the bigs on the strong side, letting Dukas all the way through, and then the slip screen to dive into the basket and get that easy opportunity. A little surprised Jefferson's not getting free throws there. So 20 back on the shot clock for St. Mary's. Corner three for Dukas, Springs rain. Wow, another great no-look gem from Jefferson, who peeked away to throw the ball to the corner. That was a long pass, too. About 30 feet or so from Jefferson. Different look for them at the four this year. And one thing the Gales have experimented with the last couple of games, Dave, is putting Dukas at the four at times with Barrett at the three. 14 to shoot. Ozell Jackson didn't want the three. This is St. Mary's biggest lead. Four to shoot. Jackson sent away by Saxon. And a shot clock violation. That's a good defensive stand by St. Mary's. With five guys moving their feet, recognizing, jumping to the ball, cutting off those driving gaps. Well you, done. You can really see with the Blue Raiders that they're still trying to find their way in the half court without Cameron Weston. They were trying to get everything off the bounce, not a lot through their flow and half-court movement. Blue Raiders back into a zone. How do the Gales respond? Mahaney a corner three. Jefferson another offensive rebound. Marshallonis right to the rim. He is so strong. Built just like his dad going to the rim. His dad actually played against the Blue Raiders with the Soviet national team back in the late 80s. They made their uh, their tour, kind of gearing up for the 88 Olympics. Middle Tennessee was the only team to beat them that year. Holman Jones missed the layup, missed the putback. A team that also featured Arvidas Sabonis. Gales have scored the first seven points of this second half. Jefferson wants to go. Jefferson is fouled. No shot, says Michael Reed. So St. Mary's will have it on the baseline. You look forward to West Coast Conference play, Dave. Jefferson's going to be a handful for the fours of the league, you would imagine. As big man Coleman Jones comes off, Loof is back in there. I think they'll have a great tandem using with Forbes as well at that spot. They'll have great versatility at that four. And the, the kind of the beauty of Mason Forbes is that he can also slide to the five. And the Gales can kind of play the matchups at that position.
14 to shoot. Gales in the second half, three of five. Marshallonis with eight to shoot. Finds Dukas. Two to shoot and a bad pass. So the turnover will take us to the timeout. The Gales ended the first half slowly offensively, but they have come back to life in half number two. Four minutes into the second half, St. Mary's on top of Middle Tennessee, 40-16. to 16. It's the Gales' biggest lead. And the Blue Raiders will have the basketball out of the timeout. Middle Tennessee, 0 of 5 since halftime. Gales not having a great offensive game, but they've been so good on this end of the court. King still held scoreless. Blue Raiders leading score at 13 and a half a game. And again, one and done, only three offensive rebounds tonight for Middle Tennessee. That rebounding margin right now for the Gales, 31 to 15. Twelve to shoot. Luth deflects the entry pass from Dukas out of bounds. Here comes Luke Barrett. Dukas comes off. Middle Tennessee, last time they played in the NCAA tournament back in 2017 under Kermit Davis. Jefferson, kick out to Barrett. Gets his own miss. Another offensive rebound for St. Mary's. That is now 16. Marshall Onis with the left hand wow. and one. He is so strong with that left hand. Very difficult finish. He's got nine now. Dukas leads the way for the Gales with 11. St. Mary's has struggled from the free throw line this year so far, but Marshallonis completes the three-point play. The Gales are three of four from the stripe. And they've opened their lead to 27. The freshman, Loof. Trying to go baseline on Saxon. Has it knocked away? 10 to shoot. Ozell Jackson pushes it up and in. First points for Middle Tennessee in the second half. Jackson may have had that ball slip out and batted it in with the left hand. Great job staying with it. Blue Raiders back into his zone. There's Jefferson. Dave waiting at the high post. Nine to shoot. Great movement in that zone. Jefferson mid-range. Saxon with the offensive rebound out of his jersey tugged by King. A foul on the uh, Blue Raiders senior. St. Mary's will keep it. Middle ten Saxon is taking out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't react as much with Mrs. Lewis grabbing onto his jersey. <laughs> I'm more apt to cower. And do as you're told, of course. Yes. You're new at this marriage thing. You'll learn. You'll learn, Mr. Jensen. All right, I thought I said one fade. It's, it's two free throws in the ball for Saxon. This was a big part of his game in that win against UNLV. 7 of 10. Many of those in crunch time. They had been struggling from the free throw line. 7 of 10 brought him up to 61%. But the Gales have shot free throws much better tonight. 4 of 5 from the line. He didn't look that little diamond set on this out-of-bounds. Well, Marshall Onis will take a timeout on the inbound. That will take us to a media stoppage as well here in Moraga. 14.05 to go, Dave. Gales off to a good start in the second half. Not off Back to Moraga. St. Mary's enjoying its biggest lead of the game at 27. 14.05 to play. With Dave Lewis, I'm Alex Jensen. Glad you could join us on this Tuesday night. And the Gales will get another crack at this baseline out of bounds. With Marshallonis, Mahaney, Barrett, Jefferson, and Saxon on the floor. Mahaney, nice pass across the lane to Saxon. Got his man in the air. He'll make another trip to the line. We're talking about Mahaney during the break, Alex. That 
it's not his night in terms of scoring and making every shot, but he's not trying too hard to make something happen for himself. His team is dominating this game. Just take what the game brings to you. Eventually, the shots will fall. Well, that's kind of how you break out of it, right, is you play within the structure of the game, the structure of your offense. Now you try and force things, you can dig yourself a digger, uh, bigger hole. Yeah, he's letting his teammates pick up the slack and taking what's there for him, and eventually the shots are going to drop. Reminder, you can join us here in Moraga as Christmas with the Gales continues on Thursday. Plenty of tickets available for camper reunion nights, especially in the lower GA on the uh, sideline across from the benches. Saxon knocks down both free throws, and Wessels will check in. You talk about the perfect stocking stuffer. Get your Gales tickets, smcgales.com. Ugly sweater night on Saturday, early New Year's Eve on the 29th. Jefferson rebounds the Porter miss. Gale's biggest lead is right now. Jefferson on King. Trying to spin, and King reaches in. So the Gales are already in the bonus. This will be one and one free throws for Joshua Jefferson with 13-31 remaining. We were talking about that great tradition in Middle Tennessee and the teams that made the NCAA tournament. That 2016 squad was one of the few to ever, as a 15 seed, beat a two when they knocked out Michigan State. One of the one of uh, several very good teams under Kermit Davis, who left after that 2018 year to go to Ole Miss. He he really guided this program, Dave, from the Sun Belt to uh, Conference USA and. They did not miss a beat. 16 years, 332 wins. Jefferson slides home both free throws. Jalen Jordan takes a turn at point for Middle Tennessee. This is not Nick McDevitt's first trip here either, is it, Dave? He's here with UNC Asheville in 2017. That year, his team getting worked over. Macy O'Teague and company. Fell to Jock Landale, Tanner Krebs. Jock had 23, Tanner 22 that night. Jalen Jordan will go to the line. He has really had a, a solid career. He's had a couple of speed bumps with two ACL tears on that right knee. You see the brace. He scored. Jalen Jordan, Dave, did he score at 20 points? Earlier this season, for the first time in, in over a in over a thousand days, just a great testament for his care, as his courage, his character, hanging in there, bouncing back from what many would have had as a career-ending injury. The 21 points against UMKC earlier this year, first time since February 13th, 2021. Gets all three free throws. Barrett downstairs, sent away by Ozell Jackson. Here come the Blue Raiders. The elite is 28. Foul called on Mahaney, reaching over the top of the screen. St. Mary's now has three in double figures. Dukas with 11, Saxon with 10, Marshallonis with 10. And Augustus will come off now. The freshman Jordan Ross returns. Had to go very deep at the bench with the guards. I think some big reserves can get some run here late in the second half. Jared Coleman Jones. He's been quiet. And he's walled up there by Harry Wessels. Gets it back with six to shoot. Buford from the elbow. And the rebound out of bounds. Last touch by St. Mary's. Well, walled up Alex was a great description because Harry just held his ground, hands up, impenetrable. And he is listed at 7'1", 255. He's every bit of that. 
with cat-like feet as well. And once he learns to slow the game down a little bit, he is going to be a load. And we saw some of that in the first half when Harry had six straight points. Really communicating over that ball screen. Jefferson fouls Ozell Jackson. 12.23 to go. Free throws upcoming for Middle Tennessee. I do want to give a shout-out, Dave, and some props. Last night, the St. Mary's women beat Cal State East Bay, and Allie Bamberger scored her 1,000th point here at St. Mary's. And that made uh, her and her dad, Eric Bamberger, the first father-daughter duo to score 1,000 points at the same Division I institution. So congratulations to Allie Bamberger, the Bamberger family basketball royalty here in Moraga. Eric was a very good player before moving on to coaching. And Allie, I've been following her since her days at Carondelet. Spent her first year at Washington, came back home here to Moraga via the transfer portal as Jackson misses both free throws. A really cool piece of St. Mary's history. With Allie reaching that mark. Eight to shoot. Here's Wessels. Go to work. Good move. Just couldn't finish with the offhand. Sticks with it. Puts it back in. Well, he's got a little extra skip in his step tonight. A lot of swagger. You do not expect someone 7'1", 255 to make a move as quick as he did to his left hand. Coleman Jones, a lot of muster on that pass from Buford. Floater on the way, no good, a foul called. Jacob Johnson will go to the line, and that will take us to a timeout here in Moraga. St. Mary's in control, 11.27 to play. That hammer, uh, you're going to be the uh, the uh, new morning anchor up there. Do I, do I have that right? Congratulations are in order for you. Uh, getting up at 2.30 in the morning is not something I'm looking forward to, but I'm excited about the great opportunity. Working with a great Rebecca Kitchen, local icon in the Reno area. Well, uh, we've got a few more games together here this year, but it's been a blast working with you, Dave, over the last handful of years. And uh, you'll be missed here in Moraga, that's for sure. Hey, I'm coming back on Saturdays. I'm not going to miss the <laughs> Gonzaga game. Save my spot. Jacob Johnson splits the free throws. Here's some full-court pressure from Middle Tennessee. Mahaney waves off help. So a 29-point St. Mary's lead. Hales once again have controlled this game with their defense. Middle Tennessee is 7 of 32 from the field. Jordan Ross with 8 to shoot. And he travels. And just the fifth St. Mary's turnover. That's just a growing pain. Got a lot of talent. A little indecisive on what he wanted to do with it that time. At one point, the Gales were 9 of 18 in this game, Dave. They're now 19 of 51. 37%. Mentioned being able to win ugly like they did last time out. Three skips off the front rim from Jalen Jordan. Long rebound controlled by the Blue Raiders. Middle Tennessee here in the second half, 1 of 11. Coleman Jones trying to make his way around Wessels. Wessels will be called for the foul, and Jones scoops it high off the window and in. An and one for the Blue Raider big man. He'll go to the line, try and complete a three-point play. Very close to dragging that pivot foot. Couple bail uh, bench players in the Gale were making that traveling motion. Well, you, you can tell, Dave, just looking at the, the stat sheet for the Blue Raiders that they're, again, we mentioned this earlier, but trying to find themselves offensively. And there's no better indicator of that than the fact that Jared Coleman Jones leads their team right now in assists. They're, they're looking for a guy to distribute, run the offense. Mason Forbes in for the Gales. You know, the goal when you come from a league like Conference USA is be at your best for that one week in March. Has the makings of a one big league again. 
Wessels, nice move. That time able to finish with the left hand. Wessels into double figures with 10 points. Joe Rahan said today that you know, Harry didn't get a lot of run against Vegas, but he was going to be ready for tonight. Buford. Nine to shoot. Johnson. Dukas knocks it out of bounds. Off the leg of Jacob Johnson. Dukas forces the turnover, the 11th on Middle Tennessee. Here comes I was saying the focus defensively was shell drills and just getting into gaps, being smart. They don't run a lot of stuff. It's just being solid in your assignments. Chris Howell checks in for Mahaney. Nine and a half minutes to play. Jordan also comes off from Middle Tennessee. And the Blue Raiders will drop back into this 2-3 zone. Forbes at the elbow has it knocked away. Ends up right in the lap of Wessels. Little pinball machine bounce and Harry there to clean it up. Harry's got a dozen. That matches a career high. St. Mary's lead now 31. Step back J is good for Porter. Slight use of that left hand to create some separation. He's sliding back for that step back jumper. And yeah, a good tic tac toe and Wessels with a reverse. He's got a new career high. He has the last eight for St. Mary's. That's Tex how you beat a zone. Textbook way to attack it, starting at the foul line, working inside, then going low with that action to find Wessels. Johnson along the baseline. Wessels sent it away. Dukas on the run. How about giving up 26 points in 32 minutes? The same team that gave up 14 in the first half to UNLV. Here's a steal for Howell. One-on-one, -on -one, he's got Wessels, and Wessels, I think, wanted the lob. Howell tried to shovel it across. So a St. Mary's turnover. Comes Luke Barrett. Dukas will come off. Alex Dukas with 13. Jordan Ross also checks out for the Gales. Cade Bennett will get his first minutes tonight. Randy Bennett reaches deeper into the bench. First playing time for Cade Bennett since the Davidson game. When you're looking at these games being bunched so uh, closely together right now, you really need the bench to pick up some good minutes. Howell with good hands forces the turnover. And Gales, they will next welcome in Northern Kentucky, the team picked to win the Horizon League. Howell tries a three. Northern Kentucky, they beat this Middle Tennessee team in Murfreesboro in the season opener, 74-57. King has not scored yet. Yeah, rolled up on a little bit there by Barrett on the floor for the loose ball. Seven minutes to go. It's been all St. Mary's here tonight. In Middle Tennessee, you want to see effort. Something that will show on the film. Wessels! The two-hand jam. And a timeout taken by Randy Bennett. So Harry Wessels building on a career high. He's got 16. I mean, you don't see that flow yet when they were really good with the slicing off the high post when Mickey McConnell was here. That kind of action where five guys are moving as one. Not quite there yet, but defensively, rebounding, taking care of it. They've been on their egg game tonight. As a coach, the, those are the little things that you want to see your team do heading into league play. Rebound, defend. Those are the things that you can control on a nightly basis. Other things you need to work on and eventually execute and fine-tune.
Good footwork, Cade. Ten to shoot for the Blue Raiders. King will try. There's his first points of the game. Elias King averaging nearly 14 a contest. Hits a three over the hand of uh, Mason Forbes. And coach says shooting is his superpower, but the Gales have been his kryptonite tonight. King just one of seven from the field. He's been hot, too. Career high 27 against Belmont. And 22 in the game before that for Middle Tennessee and an overtime win against Missouri State. Foul called away from the ball in the Blue Raiders. Love watching the body language of the coaches in a one-sided game because they don't view this as garbage time. It's about executing and doing things the right way. St. Mary's to be one and one for Saxon. Ten points, four rebounds tonight. The reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Week. We've got a lane violation on the Blue Raiders. The Saxon will get another, another try. I mean, to you know, Dave mentioning that Saxon had all ten of the Gales points in double overtime. I don't think that quite does justice on his impact in that UNLV game. I mean, he you know, it's 16 rebounds. He's a difference maker around the rim. Seven of those rebounds, actually nine offensive rebounds in the win over the Rebels. 33 to four, the offensive rebounds in that double overtime win for St. Mary's. And Mitch, and only four rebounds tonight for Saxon, but coming into play second in the country in offensive rebounds per game. Nearly five a contest. When you rebound and guard, you can mask some offensive deficiencies. They won that game despite going just one of 19 on threes. 62-29. Middle Tennessee for the game, 10 of 37. They turned it over 14 times. Mosley walks into a 17-footer. Bend at the rebound. And normally when teams come here to Moraga, Dave, you know, we talk about the pace. These are two teams that really are two of the slowest paced teams in all of college basketball. Bennett run the pick and roll with Saxon who scores through contact. In general with that slow pace, an eight point differential would seem like 14 or 16. Yep. Saxon's got 13. King, nice pass. A back cut and a beautiful one handed bounce pass from King as Johnson makes a count. Barrett lost vision momentarily. That was enough to create that opening for the pass. Final four and a half minutes for Moraga. First of a four game homestand for St. Mary's before West Coast Conference play. Forbes will drive the lane. And an offensive foul as he used the offhand to push off on King. Hills have made seven of their last eight. Wessels will return. Trey Green, 6'3", sophomore of Baltimore, checks in for the first time for Nick McDevitt's team. These guys are still finding themselves as they ramp up for Conference USA play. A lot of work to do. We mentioned it. It has the potential to be a wide open league as the big man Loof steps out and knocks down a triple. Liberty and Middle Tennessee pick to win the league. Of course, Middle Tennessee losing an all league player in Cameron Weston in the second game of the season. Cade Bennett can't find the range. Green will push ahead. King lost it. 
Here come the Gales. Wessels working on a career high 16, make it 18. Pretty nimble around the rim. Yeah, he has got Dave some moves that are not common for seven footers. Loof may have gotten away with a travel. Instead, it'll be a jump ball as Howell got two hands on the leather. That takes us to our final timeout here in Moraga on this Tuesday night. 3.09 to go. Dave Lewis, St. Mary's in control, and the guys deeper on the games. Dave, they'll head to Southern Utah and Murray State. A home game against Reinhardt before beginning Conference USA play against Louisiana Tech, who's off to a good start this year at 9-3. Louisiana Tech, Western Kentucky, Liberty all at 9-3. and three. Two teams in the conference in the top 100. Liberty at 53 and La Tech at number 58 in the net. Ozell Jackson fouled by Howell. He'll go to the line. Western Kentucky right now on top of Cal Baptist in Riverside, 73-63. Bill Toppers, first-year head coach. Steve Lutz yes. replaced Rick Stansbury after that long run. Zell Jackson too strong on a three. So you look here, Dave, now at the at a conference USA that is kind of at least coming into the season, kind of seen as, as the Wild West. Liberty's had a lot of success in the A Sun. Of course, they're taking a step up in competition now. New Mexico State enters the fray, and in, in most years you'd think that, well, the Aggies are coming in. They're going to be a, a quality program toward the top of that league. They've gone through a ton of turmoil there over the last calendar year. And you know, they're off to a tough start as well. But Western Kentucky, historically strong. UTEP has had some quality years, but a lot of unknowns still in the league. Yeah, Liberty has dropped three out of five. They got that one Division I victory during that stretch over Mississippi Valley State. Rich McKay with a very long and illustrious career. La Tech trying to bounce back after that buzzer beating loss to St. Louis. Liberty, they do have wins over some quality programs. Wichita State and Vermont. Furman has had solid years. Wessels with 14 on the shot clock. Blue Raiders converge. Howell wide open in the corner. Nice find by Cade Bennett making the extra pass. And Howell in rhythm for the catch and shoot three. That's the Gales fifth three tonight. They are five of 19 from deep. Loof. Pull up jumper, not there for Trey Green. Ross wants to push. Nice pass from Howell. Ross didn't want the three. Instead, he slithers his way to the cup. Can't get the right-handed lay-in, but Wessels cleans up the garbage. He's got 20. With a primal scream as he trots into the backcourt. A timeout taken by Middle Tennessee. This will get Jack Jubinville, redshirt sophomore, into the game. He's from Murfreesboro. Here comes Kevin Gadd. Howell comes off. Kevin, part of the re renaissance at Granada High School in Livermore. Isaiah Lightsey also into the game for the Blue Raiders. And Kevin Gadd and Andrew McKeever, who's redshirting the seven-footer for St. Mary's this season. A seven-footer. I think seven-footer is not doing him justice. He is. He might have an inch on, on Wessels, who's 7-1. Wessels forced the miss, could not corral the rebound. He'll stay with the Blue Raiders. Can we go ahead and book Wessels for the post game? I think so. Yeah. Harry Wessels will join us post game. Barring a sudden change, Trey Green runs over Gad, who draws the charge. The Gale bench goes crazy. All about the little things and the starting unit. You love that cohesiveness. Duke is leading the cheering, rooting on your teammates. Final 80 seconds from University Credit Union Pavilion. Gales, this will be consecutive win number four with three more home games remaining. 
until the start of league play in San Diego on January 4th. Here's a turnover. The one thing missing, getting Gad his first basket. Yes. One minute to play. Some fans heading toward the exits here in Moraga. 12 to shoot. Green for Jubinville. Green will try a three. Ross high in the air for the rebound as it poked away from behind by Jackson. And Jackson will be blocked at the rim by Wessels, but a foul called. So Jackson will go to the stripe, 31.8 to play. Ozell Jackson, 6'8 junior from Bronx, New York. They're intrigued by this guy, Dave, his coaching staff. They like his skill. Wessels says, nothing free tonight. This guy was a double-double machine in junior college, even a couple triple-doubles. He has struggled from the line tonight, though. 0 of 5. Barrett checks in for Wessels. A career night for Harry Wessels and the Gale fans. Letting him know. 20 for the big man from Western Australia. Jackson 0 for 6 from the line. And about a half second differential between the two clocks. It's been all St. Mary's tonight. Gad. Here we go. A little strong. He's got it, trying to drive as it knocked away and blocked at the rim. Barrett, not there with eight with seven. Middle Tennessee will run out with the seconds winding away. Jubinville mishandles and it'll go back to St. Mary's. Gale's bench was ready to erupt with Gad so close to getting that first Division I basket. So 2.9 left to come off the clock. And, you know, for St. Mary's, Dave, who's trying to find their way early, four consecutive wins. They are now 7-5 and five after the worst eight-game start under Randy Bennett. When you look at the wins for St. Mary's, Cleveland State here at home, Colorado State on the road, UNLV.